There was an elderly king who had no sons to succeed him on the throne. He posted a sign throughout his kingdom asking for applicants. There are only two requirements for the job, that the person love God and neighbor deeply. Now there was a young peasant boy who felt compelled to go and to interview, but he only had rags to wear. So he worked real hard, got a little money put together, and bought himself some clothes to make him look more presentable when he showed up at the king's castle. Now as he was on his way, he came across an old man shivering in the cold and begging for some clothes to help keep him warm. The boy thought for a moment and decided to give him the new clothes that he had bought. And so he did. And he thought to himself, if I go on to the castle, I wonder if they'll ever even let me in with these rags that I'm wearing and as bad as I look. Well, they let him in. And much to his amazement, when he got near the throne room, the man sitting on the throne, the king, was that old man who had been shivering in the cold. And all the king did was smile at the boy and said, Welcome, my son. God has found in everyday life and uses everyday people like Micah, like Mary, and like you and me. God works in unexpected ways through unexpected people. <clears throat> Our first reading comes from the book of the prophet Micah, a rustic peasant prophet and a contemporary of the great Isaiah of Jerusalem who lived in the 8th century B.C. Like Amos before him, Micah denounced the southern kingdom of Judah for its social ills by the way, this is the only day and time that we hear from Micah in the Sunday lectionary. You see, today's reading is a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah from an insignificant little town called Bethlehem, too small to be listed by Joshua as territory belonging to a tribe. Yet, from it came David the king, and the longed-for Messiah. We see the fulfillment of this prophecy in the coming of Jesus. Isn't it entirely astounding and unexpected that the Lord himself would come to us and share our humanity? The second reading is from the book of Hebrews and stresses Christ's sacrifice as an offering of his body in obedience to his heavenly Father. Christ took on a body so as to have an instrument by which to offer this perfect sacrifice of obedience to the will of God the Father. This reading today is a reminder that we can never disassociate the incarnation from redemption, Bethlehem from Golgotha. We come today to celebrate in sacramental form that same sacrifice, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The Gospel is the familiar visitation story. Three times in today's Gospel, Mary is called blessed. It was Mary's faith and obedience in bearing the Christ child that makes her blessed. Mary is called blessed not for what she is or was in herself, but only in relation to the Incarnation, her relationship with her Divine Son. Mary is blessed not through her intrinsic merit, but because of the faith which, 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 which she accepted her role. Blessed emphasizes that Mary's importance to Christian faith depends on her faith and her obedience as the preconditions that made the Incarnation humanly possible. Now in the public life of Jesus, 
later on, someone will call out, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast that nursed you. Jesus will reply, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Mary is the prime example of the disciple who hears the word of God and observes it. Are we like Mary? Mary?